All right, let's talk about Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oof. Talk about <laughs> life changing. For me, nobody really changed my life as much as this guy did. Um, I started playing guitar at six years old, and I was into B.B. King and Albert King because my dad liked the blues and he had a lot of records. Um, but Stevie, when I finally paid attention and sat down and really heard Stevie Ray Vaughan, it was when someone handed me a bootleg of Live at the Elma Combo before it was an official release. Now, I'm 10 when Stevie Ray passes away, so I was probably 12 when I got this VHS. And I put it in, and again, just it was like my brain exploded. Like, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was somebody influenced by all the things I was listening to already, and he had taken it to this level that I didn't think was reachable. And besides that, he was putting everything he had into every note he played. He was sweating his butt off and playing so hard. And, man, it was just so inspiring to see this. I was literally blown away, and I knew that's what I wanted to do with my life. So I went to the record store, and the only record they had in stock was uh, Couldn't Stand the Weather. And that's his second album. You put it in, and, of course, the first thing on the record is... You know, Scuttle Button... And, well, God, if that's the first thing that comes on when you're a kid and you hear that, it's just like, <laughs> what the heck is this? I, you know, and I didn't know oh, that's inspired by Lonnie Mack and all that. I just thought this guy has the fastest guitar player in the world and the greatest guitar player that's ever lived. And, you know, again, changed my life overnight. Now, as I dug deeper into Stevie Ray and got all the records, I started to hear how much he loved Albert King, how much he loved Otis Rush, how much he loved B.B. King, Jimi Hendrix, you know, what he was listening to. But again, the biggest thing that I always took away from Stevie was that joy and the effort, the amount of effort he put into everything. So I fell hard, man. I grew my hair. I bought a cowboy hat. I bought cowboy boots, and I was all about Stevie Ray. I got my first Strat. This isn't it. But it was all inspired by wanting to be like Stevie Ray Vaughan. And, man, it's directly responsible in, for some ways in where I am now as a musician. Because not only did I go too far down the Stevie Ray Vaughan path, I also had that light bulb moment of, oh, I can't just be a Stevie Ray Vaughan clone. And I think if I hadn't gone as far as I would have, I mean, deep into that Stevie thing, maybe I wouldn't have ever had that epiphany. And I'd still be kind of just doing his thing on the periphery most of the time. So it was very important in my development. Um, so if you've never heard Stevie Ray Vaughan, number one, I'm sorry. And number two, go buy them all. There's no reason not to have Texas Flood, Couldn't Stand the Weather, Soul to Soul, Live Alive, In Step, and Sky is Crying, the posthumous release. You need to have all these things. Um, and you definitely need to get Live at the Alma Combo on video. And wow, you're, it's going to blow your mind. Uh, like it did mine. Now, what made Stevie so special playing-wise, besides all that, you know, magic that we talked about? Well, number one, he was incredibly fluid, right? So he could take that Albert King, and he had that uh, that lick ender. He turned it in. He went in a lot of times on that flat three and it was like his lick ender and again i took that part and parcel and you'll hear me play it all the time magical stuff um but he was so fluid like a never-ending stream <laughs> special special stuff right really really great um and of course he had the albert king thing going on now he played it with a little more gain he kind of made it his own but i mean a lot of people when he first came out thought that was albert king when they heard him playing on let's dance with david bowie they thought david bowie got albert king to play on this tune so 
you know, he had Albert, he had Otis Rush going on in there. A lot of his fast stuff came from Lonnie Mack. So, like, if you listen to Rude Mood, or that was Lightning Hopkins, but Scuttle Button. That's all directly out of the Lonnie Mack Chicken Bicken playbook. Uh, a lot of his bends came from Albert, but also from Otis Rush. that little phrase ender um, but man listen to that fluidity and he was so quick and fluid and yeah, that when I heard stuff like that, I had no other feeling but I want to do that. I need to do that. Uh, another thing that Stevie did that blew me away as a kid was he played with a Leslie all the time. He had a, a Fender Vibratone, and I remember hearing him play Cold Shot, and I don't have a Leslie, but I got a pedal, and having that... And having that little thing that he would play... playing licks like I was like wow I need a Leslie so I saved up and I bought a Fender Vibratone because I had to I had to do that thing I had to be able to to say I had the gear I had the stuff I was that obsessed um, he like I said he just totally changed my life in all the ways for the positive. So let's get into a Stevie Ray Vaughan style track. For me, that means it's got to be a shuffle in E, right? Like Pride and Joy. You need that Texas shuffle where all of the Stevieisms can come out and I can kind of tip my hat for real to probably, you know, the most important influence I ever had in, in terms of my development. So let's get into some Stevie Ray Vaughan. 